Hi, I'm Tracy Lenz, and today we're going to go over when revenue multiples work in order to value what your minerals are worth, and the pitfalls that you can fall into, and the ways you can save money by estimating it using something that you can get for free. So stick with me, and we will walk through what this means here. You might have heard that you can take your royalties that you received last month or last year, add it up, and multiply it by a certain number in order to get how much that well is worth if you were to sell it. And that is sometimes true, and we're going to walk through why. We have vertical wells, and we have horizontal wells, and they tend to produce a little differently. Most of our rules of thumb have been generated when we have our vertical wells, because those are the older wells that have been around longer, somewhere around 100 plus years. So we've had a lot of time to come up with these rules of thumb and ways to you know, guesstimate how much something's worth based on easy numbers, such as your 1099 or your revenue statement, without having to pull in an engineer or get into any type of decline analysis or reservoir analysis. So here we have a typical decline profile for a vertical well as it starts producing and then as it starts to decline over time. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about declining wells. They are literally declining in value and, and declining in production volume. Decline curve analysis is the science behind how you essentially draw a line through points. There's actual scientific equations behind why that works. It's not just seeing a trend and fitting a line through a trend. There actually is science behind why that works to predict what's happening in the future. If you really want to dig into the, the nerdy details behind it, just Google ARPS equation, A-R-P-S, or ARPS decline curve analysis. This particular well that we're looking at came online in 1991, and it is still producing. Well, as of the end of 2022, it was still producing. I don't know what when you're actually watching this. The well came online in 1991. Oil is typically green. Gas is typically red. Whenever you see it on a chart, just because oil was typically good to find, so good, green. Gas was typically bad to find, so red, bad. Things have changed now. Gas is much more friendly to economics, but in the past, it was a burden. So the well came online. There's a little bit of a cleanup period. Each data point here is a month, and this is a daily rate. So it started producing, peaked around 280 barrels per day. And then gas peaked around 1,300 MCF per day. This is just the monthly average for what it did. This data you can find on the state, whatever state you're looking at, their Railroad Commission or Oil and Gas Commission. So, so for Texas, it's the Railroad Commission. For Oklahoma, it's the OCC. Your state's Division of Natural Resources, whatever your state calls it. Production has to be reported to the state. So you can grab this information from the state. That's where I'm grabbing it. And so we have peak production here. Then it falls off pretty quickly. But as you can see, it doesn't go to zero. I mean, we're still producing, honestly, not a whole lot. I mean, this is probably around one barrel per day on average of oil, 144 MCF of gas a day. That's probably just barely enough to pay for the cost of operating the well. So this is what's called a linear scale where 0, 200, 400, 600, 800, probably what you're used to seeing, where it goes up linearly, where every interval here is the same amount. How the equations work and how the decline parameters work is that if we were to switch this to a log scale, all of a sudden you have something that looks relatively like a straight line. Now, real data in the real world is never a straight line. If you are seeing a very, very, very straight line, I would question it. There's always something going on. This is the cleanest that I could find in my quick little look of data that I had on hand. This is really clean data showing a very nice straight line. So this is my definition of a straight line. <laughs> the equations are nice and friendly when you start looking at it on an exponential or a logarithmic scale over here where we have 0 0.1, 1, 10, 100, 1,000. That's the logarithmic scale versus time. So along the bottom here is time. Now we have a relatively straight line. We can put a relatively straight line through it and project what the well is going to do in the future. And that's exactly what decline curve analysis does. It takes an, an exponential decline equation and projects it through these vertical conventional wells and predicts what's going to happen in the future. So because I wanted to prove this to myself and I'd heard the rule of thumb myself, I didn't trust it. In God, we trust everything else we question, right? I, I ran it through my economic models and said, okay, if you have one month of production using what we know, the well is going to decline what multiple would you use each month in order to predict what the value of that well is? So if you were to use a back of the napkin estimate, what would you use? Ran it with one month of data, ran it with two months of data, ran it with three months of data. For the first month, this particular well is online. It has a value of 4.4 million. The next month, 4.3. The next month, 4.1, 4.0. Every month, it's decreasing in value because you're producing 
some of the value. So you have part of it in your check in your pocket and the rest of it is the remaining value. So every month you get a little more in your pocket and a little less remaining value. So that's what this is projecting. So if you're 10 months out, you're going to have a certain amount remaining and a certain amount that you've already cashed in. So not remaining. If we take a, that vertical well that we were looking at a little bit ago, where we had this production profile, and we were to look at the first month, second month versus remaining value, third month versus remaining value, fourth month versus remaining value. Here is the multiple that you would take. Let's say you're on year 10 of production for this well. And last month, you made $1,000 from your interest in this well. You could take that $1,000 and multiply it by a certain number in order to estimate what the remaining value of all this future production is going to be. I did that through a equation-based system where I would model it each month, and then I modeled that, and each month you could take what the previous month's production was and multiply it times this number that I plotted here in order to get the remaining value. And it is very close to 60. This is in order to get the 10% discounted value, if, if that means anything to you. If a buyer said they'd be willing to pay PV10, that's the lingo for it. They want to pay PV10 for your future production, then they would pay approximately 58, 59 times your last month's production. Usually there's some amount of risk that's applied to these things. Some buyers want to pay PV12 or PV8, some even PV15, 20. That's kind of low. PV10 is kind of about average for the industry. I wanted to hinge on PV10. A PV10 would say that over the course of your investment, you'd make about a 10% return on your money. So this is basically the foundation of why there's that rule of thumb that you can use. I'll zoom in for y'all. So here's multiple and here's month of production. We have about 58, somewhere in there. Over time, you can almost always take somewhere between 50 and 60 and multiply it times your last month's production and get a good number for what the remaining value is. And that's been the rule of thumb that a lot of people are told to use for what to, what value to put on your minerals. Okay, well, just take the amount you made. If you're taking last month's, multiply it times 60. If you're taking last year's, multiply it times five, five years or 60 months. I felt pretty comfortable with this. This is, this is actually... All right, this lines up with what me as an engineer would forecast for the well. Cool. There is an easy way that you can take a number and multiply it times something you know without having to know any of the engineering stuff. What happens if you put the same method on a horizontal well? Do we get the same result? Let's see. So now I'm back on our linear scale where it's 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, but I'm looking at a horizontal well. And these are those long wells with all the like the fracking that you hear about that they're shale wells or tight gas sands or something tight oil, shale oil, things that are completed in a different way than the vertical wells. And they have a different production profile because of it. There's just different dynamics involved. This is a, a 2019, so a modern well that was drilled horizontally. This is Permian Basin, by the way. So a Permian Basin bone spring wells. So a typical unconventional. These wells come in differently. They start off differently and they really spike in the beginning. The one or two months of cleanup time, mostly because we've gotten really good at cleaning up these wells quickly. And then you have a massive spike that first couple months. So this first month, this well is peaking at 1,200 barrels a day, barrels of oil per day. That's a lot, especially looking at the last one we just looked at, right? So that one peaked around 200 barrels a day. This one's peaking at 1,200 barrels a day. Not only that, but the red is the gas. The gas here is peaking at 6,000 MCF per day. 6,000. See how quickly this falls. So each one of these points is one month, one month between the first month of peak gas production and the second month, we almost cut in half. And then the next month after that, it's about a third. It's diminishing over time, but it gets better. So there's less of a decline over time, but it's really dramatic at first. So then you might wonder if we were to switch this to an exponential scale, like we just looked at with the last well, can we use that same trick where we or can just draw a straight line through it if we put it on a certain scale? So let's try it. So the short answer is no. If you tried to put a straight line through these points the same way that you did a vertical well, you would almost every single time underestimate the amount that it was going to produce in the future because this is what's called a hyperbolic decline. So if exponential had the same slope over time on this type of plot, hyperbolic has a changing slope over time 
You can't use those same equations that you use for the vertical wells that you use for these horizontal wells. So what does that mean? If you were to use the, that same multiple that you were told you could use for a vertical well, it would not predict the horizontal well appropriately. So we need to readjust what multiples we're using when we're using that kind of back of the napkin math on horizontals. And we need to know when that needs to be adjusted. So here's the exact same methodology where I'm modeling a very typical decline profile for a horizontal well. I'm taking the value of the remaining production divided by last month's revenue. The value of the remaining production divided by last month's revenue and just plotting that over time. And here's what we get for a hyperbolic declining well. Not quite as linear. That very first month where you had that super high peak, you can't multiply it times a really high number in order to estimate what's going to happen because you'd be overestimating it. So that number gets lower. The very first month for this example well, it's closer to 20. Now, if we went just 12 months into the future, we're looking at something closer to 30. You have to go all the way to about four years where you're about equal with your vertical wells in terms of taking last month's production to estimate the future value. You get beyond that and it declines so so shallow past that that you get something higher than even 60, but the math gets a little fuzzy in terms of the reliability long term. And once you start risking something out that far, you don't get up to a 70 times multiple until over 10 years from when the well first came online. The very first shale wells really started coming online around 2008. We barely have 15 years of total data. No one's going to pay you higher than average value for something way far out in the future. You can almost ignore this part here. In fact, we will change this axis. So now every line here is a year. First year, you're around 33. The second year, you're around 43. You're around 49. So really beyond, getting into the fourth year and beyond, you get more similar to what we were looking at over here. I'll change this also. <laughs> you almost have a flat line for the first 10 years of production. If I were to summarize what I'm seeing, here's what I would recommend. If you have wells that are more than four years old and there's no likely drilling in the next five years, or you don't care about drilling in the next five years, maybe you're in an area where you know that, that there's no permits being filed anywhere around you. There's 100 miles before you get to the next well being drilled. There's probably not going to be any drilling happening soon. Because none of this values any future production. This is only the stuff that's already producing. And the stuff that hasn't been drilled yet does have value. Only use this to value the producing wells. And don't use it to value the entire portfolio unless you know, like absolutely know, that there's never going to be any more producing wells. So if you're more than four years out from that first production, you can probably use last month's production times a certain multiple in order to get a ballpark for what your minerals are worth. But if you're in that first four-year window, it gets a little more difficult to know where your well is falling because it changes so quickly. And those were ideal cases that I was showing you where we had very clean data, very easy to decline wells. If your well is bouncing around at all, which most of them do bounce around quite a bit due to different weather conditions or production conditions or wells coming on next door, yada, yada. I mean, even just that alone, but then you include pricing changing pricing throws a whole nother curveball into it. You, you're really going to get too wide of a range to be able to just look at this plot and apply something to it. Also, that assumes standard decline and different reservoirs across the country have different hyperbolic declines. You're really rolling the dice if you try to estimate based on some multiple in the first four years of that horizontal well. I do want to caution you if you're in an area with development, if you're in an area with permits, if your neighbor is getting a new well drilled right now and you're getting offers, if you have new wells drilled on your acreage, if you have even somewhat sporadically producing wells on your acreage, I would not recommend using a multiple. But if you're not in any of those situations, a multiple is a really good way to get something close to what I, as an engineer, would value using scientific cash flow methods to predict what your well will produce and be worth in the future. With that, use this knowledge with caution, transact with full clarity, and you will get the most free money that way. With that, thank you for watching, and I wish you the best.